Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Cary Graphic Arts Collection series of occasional lectures that we call Cary Online. My name is Amelia Fontenelle, and I'm very happy to welcome our speaker today and our workshop leader, Rachel Gutnick. Rachel is a small business owner here in Rochester, New York. Her company is Just Terrific Handcrafted Goods, where she specializes in paper and book arts and bookbinding and book restoration. I, uh, Rachel is an alumna of RIT School of Print Media, and that's actually how I first met her because we share that in common. But I am just, uh, I have wonderful recent memories of working with Rachel because we are both judges for the Rochester Public Libraries annual exhibition on the art of the book. And that has been just such a great memory to work with her in indulging ourselves and looking at absolutely beautiful and innovative artist books. But um, I will stop talking because I know I'm looking forward to a little stress relief in folding paper and I will turn it over to Rachel Gutnick. So thank you for coming, Rachel. Thank you for having me, Amelia. I'm really excited to be here. Um, teaching bookbinding over the internet is a brand new thing for me, but I'm very appreciative for the op opportunity and I'm so happy that so many people signed up today. Um, I used to teach a lot of in-person workshops and um, it was always great to watch people learn bookmaking and paper art for the first time, trying to explain the different qualities of paper and just the very basics. It kind of opens people's minds up to new opportunities for books, um, things that they may have around their home that they could find inspiration for. Um, I always like to think it's like a door opening for a lot of people the first time they make their, their very first book. So it's a very simple book form today. Um, it doesn't require any stitching. So a lot of books um, require signatures and folding and stitching with needles and thread. Um, but this is just paper folding and a little bit of glue. So the techniques that we're gonna talk about um, our paper grain. We're also going to learn how to turn corners and those two um, techniques are very, very important in any book art that you create. So those two techniques will kind of be a launching pad for many other book structures that you may want to figure out later. So shall we begin? So what we're going to do is a five-sided star book. Um, these are half origami, half books in that they all have pages. Um, you can write on them or you can keep them closed and hang them like from a tree or from your rear view mirror or somewhere in your home. Um, it consists of a one piece of ribbon, two covers and five single sheets of paper. Not many book forms, book structures focus on single sheets of paper. Um, but with origami books, a lot of times it builds upon each sheet. So you'll do one sheet, you'll do two sheets, and then the more that you do, you'll build upon those to create a shape. So it's a different technique than book binding in that there's no signatures, folding, or stitching. Um, but it's the same principle of adding pages on top of one another to create, you know, a front and a back, a start and an end. So um, some of these have just blank blank pages on the inside. Um, that way you can, you know, paint your own pictures, draw your own drawings, maybe, you know, write some holiday memories and send it to a loved one. Um, they're all square. Whoops. They're all square. Um, and that is because once you unfold them, you really want to have like a symmetrical appearance. If you were to do something long or wide, you really wouldn't get the same uh, fluff, let's say, once it's open. So different sizes, as long as they're square, it really doesn't matter. Um, so hopefully you have square sheets of paper and square pieces of board. Um, this is book board, um, but I always say to people, cereal boxes or you know old Amazon boxes work great. It's just a piece of cardboard. It's not gonna end up in a you know Metropolitan Museum of Art, let's say, it's gonna end up in your home. So it doesn't need to be fully archival or conservation grade, um, but any sort of decorative paper you may have, um, any sort of cardboard you may have, and then those five sheets of blank square paper is what you're going to need also. So the first thing I think we should do is clear some workspace. Okay. 
and start with the covers because the covers um, include glue. So you always wanna do the glue stuff first, that way it has time to dry. So I have two pieces of square board here. Um, they are about two inches by two inches. So if I have a two inch square cover, my, my pages, my interior pages need to be four inches. So again, you're kind of thinking about it in symmetry in, in a symmetrical form and that when it's closed, it's going to be two inches and when it's open, it's going to be four inches. So here are my other square sheets. Um, so for the cover, I just have, this is just scrapbooking paper that I had um, in a box. Um, and I like this paper because it has little squares already. So I'm just gonna choose one of these little designs and focus my cover on that section. So, um, I use like old magazines, you know, just magazine sheets as like buffer so you don't get glue on your dining room table or wherever you're working. Um, and you're gonna take your square board, you're gonna trace it wherever you want it to be glued. Um, I always use pencil just because it's bookbinders way of life is pencils. Um, and this is PVA glue. This is just what I use every day of my life. Um, this is archival grade PVA, um, but by all means an Elmer's glue stick, um, you know, those little orange cap glue, any sort of house glue or craft glue is gonna work just fine for this. Um, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna put glue on the paper in that little square that you had uh, sketched out. And then you're gonna put your paper, your board down. You're gonna flip that sheet over and use your bone folder or a paper knife or even just your fingernail. It really, you just wanna make sure there's no air bubbles, um, that it's a nice um, ad adhesion to that paper. So it really doesn't matter if it's your fingernail, if it's your fingers, what have you, um, just as long as there's no air bubbles and it's, and it's really a tight adhesion to that block. Rachel? Yes. Hi. Um, sorry, you said the cardboard should be two inches if the paper is four inches? Yes. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, and ideally, you know, if I was at my studio, I would put this under um, a weight. So again, it's a really nice tight adhesion. Um, I don't really have anything like that at home. So I'm just going to set it aside and, and it'll work out just fine. Um, the cover measurement is half of the length of the paper, yes. So if it's a two inch square cover, you're gonna have a four inch square sheet of paper. So I'm gonna do my next cover, my second cover. A lot of book binding structures, um, when you make book covers, it's actually all in one piece, on one piece of leather, one piece of cloth. Um, there are some book structures that require two separate covers, like what we're doing here. Um, it's just a different, a different design, a different appeal. I'm gonna glue that little area that you trace again. And put your board down. And then give it a nice, nice bone fold or a nice just press down. I realize my camera is a little shaky. I apologize for that. So then this one's going to get dried also. And it's, you know, it's a quick drying glue. It's just a sheet of paper. If it was leather or cloth, um, typically I would let it sit for 24 hours. Um, but this can just sit for a handful of minutes. Um, I'm going to remove my scrap piece of paper and I'm going to get my scissors. And what we're going to do next is called turning corners. And turning corners is one of the most important things um, to know how to do in book cover making. So anytime you make a book cover, you're going to have to turn the corners. Um, and turning the corners is a little bit tricky at first. Um, honestly, I think the trickiest part is cutting. 
because if you cut too little, then it's going to be really tricky. If you cut too much, then it's, you're going to have bulky corners and they're going to be poofy. Um, so I'm going to just show you once and then I'll pause and I'll show you a close up of, of where I'm cutting. And then you can cut your own and we can pause for questions. So is when that, I do this, I use quick question. Um, Katie would like to know how much edge around the cardboard should we plan to leave? And that's what we're doing right now. Yeah. Okay, great. Thanks. So this is going to be the underside of the cover. You're not going to see this part. Um, if you want to have a lot of room, maybe do a quarter inch. Um, if you're really nimble with your fingers, you can do an eighth of an inch. You just want to make sure that the, the paper is going to be folded inwards enough that it's going to be covered when the, when the inner sheets get glued down. And I'll show you what I mean once I start cutting. So this, and again, this is, this is, you can just decide how much space you want. This is about a quarter of an inch right now. And that's, that's going to be plenty. So from there, I'm going to cut this out. So Katie, this is the answer to your question. It's, it's a little bit of a margin around it. And then from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna snip these four corners off at a diagonal angle, at a 45 degree angle, just like this. And when I do this, I wanna make sure that I'm not cutting directly into where the board is and I'm not cutting too far away from the board. So what you wanna do is you wanna cut it just enough so it covers the corner, which in theory, if you had a, a ruler and you really wanted to be technical about it, you could measure the depth of the board, which is probably a 16th of an inch, and then measure an eighth of an inch out and then draw a line and then cut it. Um, precision is some people's forte. Um, for this, you know, you can just eyeball it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and cut my four corners and I'll show you a nice, get, nice good close up that you can see just how much I'm cutting off. And using paper is the easiest, using leather is the hardest. Turning corners with leather is really hard, but turning corners with paper is very easy. So let's see. No, it's, it's a hairline, just enough so that when this gets folded over and this gets folded over, you're gonna have enough where you're not seeing any exposed board. So it's about an eighth of an inch, maybe a little bit more. I hope everyone can see that okay here. Come on, you can do it phone. Maybe not. Well, how about this? So does anyone have any questions on the amount of space they need to trim off? You can try with the first one and if you figure it out, you can do even better on your second one. So I'm gonna get my scrap piece of paper back and you always wanna glue parallel. So if you're gonna go, it's square, right? So it really doesn't matter. Uh, you're gonna do these two edges and then these two edges. If you are working in a rectangular book or a portrait oriented book, again, you would wanna do the long edges first. Um, with a square book, they're all the same size. So you pick and choose. You just want to make sure that you're doing two together. So I'm going to do one. And I'm going to fold it over. And you can use your bone folder or just your finger. Just like that. It's almost like wrapping a present, but using glue. And then I'm going to do the other side here. and glue that side down. So you'll notice once those two parallel edges are glued down, you do have a little bit of an overlap with the paper in the corner. So you can see here, there's just a little bit of space and that assures you that you're not gonna have any exposed board. And that's really the key with turning corners is not to have any exposed board, but you also don't wanna have a whole lot of bulk in that overlap so that when you fold it over, it's not too bulky. So I'm gonna do this one and I'm gonna show you uh, my little trick that I do. And I did cut my fingernails. So if you have longer fingernails, you do have an advantage in this scenario. But what you're gonna do is you're just gonna kind of tick with your nail or with your bone folder. You're just gonna kind of tick it in just a little, like a little tiny indent. 
And then you're gonna fold that over. If you didn't do the little tick before you folded it over, you'll notice that you get really pointy corners and you get a little bit of bulk hanging off the sides. So instead of having, you know, like a, like a bulge or like a bloated corner, you might have a really pointy corner. Um, so, you know, there, you have four corners and you have two boards. So you have many opportunities to learn the technique as we do this, but you're going to do this for both the front and back cover. And then while the cover is dry, we can start folding the inner pages. If for some reason you were like, hey, Rachel, I'm just frustrated. I really don't care about turning corners. Can we just, you know, skip ahead? By all means, you could just cut this out and not even worry about the fold, folding the corners over. Um, the only downside is that is that you're, you are going to see a little bit of brown cardboard um, on the inside of your book. So it's just this little tiny inner margin that you'll end up seeing as cardboard. Um, so if you're just, you don't want to deal with turning the corners, you could always just trim it off right here, um, and be done with it. And that's totally acceptable too. So I have one, I have one cover done. I'm going to do the other one. Again, they're all uniform all around. And then a 45 degree snip with just, just enough to cover that corner. And I always say it's always best to cut too much. And then if you need to cut more when you're gluing, that's, that's a much better option. I found myself in predicaments, even with leather, where I miss snip a corner and then I have to start all over um, because it exposes the board, so. Walter would like you to show the ticking of the corner again. Yeah. A little tiny indent makes a big difference. And that's, I would say that's pretty common with bookmaking are those little tiny details that you learn along the way. The more books that you make, you pick up little tricks. And honestly, sometimes those things that aren't in books that you just kind of figure out on your own, um, that becomes your bookbinding style. You know, everyone can make the same hardcover book, but if you have 10 people making that book, they're all going to look different. So ticking the corners, I'm going to glue the other edge. Let's see how this camera works. So let's um, do this corner. So this has glue on it and there's a little bit of an overhang over here and I'm just gonna dent it in. just like a little bit of a bend. I hope you can see this, Walter. This is a little bit of a, a little bit of an indent right on the corner here. And then once that is, is done, I'm gonna flip that, that flap over and it's gonna need some more glue. Okay. And that, that little tick, the trimming and the tick, I mean, that is, that is turning the corner. That is all that it is. So it's, you know, it's good to make sure that you understand what you're doing. So I'm gonna do the other one. And then we're gonna move on to the inner pages. The inner pages do need a little glue also. So I wanna make sure that we have time for things to dry. So front and back cover. So you can see that if I wanted to trim more or less off, it really wouldn't matter as long as those edges are covered so that the inner paper can get glued on and you don't see any exposed board. So I'm gonna set those aside. And again, if I'm moving too fast, this will all be recorded so you can go back and see what you missed. Um, I'm gonna put the lid on my glue. That is a bad habit of mine. I struggle with that. Could you go through how to fold and glue the paper onto the back? Um, well, you're gonna, you're gonna have the four, you're, you're gonna have the four flaps and you're gonna do the two parallel flaps um, you're going to dent the little corners in and then do the other two sides. I hope that makes sense. And if you need to go back and look at the recording, it's all, it'll be there. Um, and you'll also have access to my email. Um, I'm happy to answer specific questions afterwards. Um, 
So with our paper, um, again, it's gonna be four inches square because the covers are two inches. If you did a four inch square book, um, you're just gonna wanna make sure that the paper is two times the size. Um, and this is a super simple fold. I mean, this is something you've probably done haphazardly and not even realized, um, but it's a three fold per sheet. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna fold across and then across the other way and then you're gonna flip the sheet over and fold diagonally. So I'll go through that again with my five sheets. So across once. Open it up across the other side. Open it up flip it over and then do one cross diagonal. It doesn't matter which, which corner, but corner to corner and then fold that. There is not a right or wrong side for the page folding. If you had, you know, paper that had a decorative side, um, then once we start gluing, you'll understand which is front and back. But for the folding aspect, um, really does not matter. Um, and ideally, you know, if you have watercolor paper, you could do designs on each page first before you actually go to glue it because it is a little bit tricky to write once it's glued down. Um, but if you wanted to take the time before the binding process to make these pages decorative or have a story to them, that would be a good time to do that. So you're gonna do five of these. So take, take a few minutes and it really shouldn't take you too long. It's three folds per page. Some origami books are just massively complex. I mean, they're absolutely stunning, but they are extremely complex. So for me, a three-folded three -folded square is A-OK -okay in my book. Um, if you wanted to do, you know, 10 squares, you could do 10 squares. Um, if you wanted to do seven, you could do seven. I like five because I think it gives a nice symmetry of a star shape. Uh, but if you wanted to do any number, you would just wanna make sure that it's an odd number. That way you have the same number of points going around. In half, in half, flip over, diagonal line. Okay, I'm gonna clear some space here so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, I'm gonna move ahead. Um, so with your, with your folded sheet, what you're gonna do is you're going to make it so it kind of, it kind of uh, scrunches together. And in order to do that, what you're gonna do is you're gonna look at the, um, the full square. There's two full squares and then two squares that are cut into triangles. These are the like the flat sides. We'll call these the flat sides. So the flat side is gonna sit on the desk or on the table or wherever you're working. And then you're gonna take these first two triangles here and you're gonna fold them in. And then you're gonna fold that other top flat piece, that full square, and you're gonna push it down. So again, you're making a two inch square again, but you're kind of um, crimping those two triangle corners inward and then pushing this piece down again. And use, you can use your bone folder to make sure it's a nice creased square. I'm gonna do that again with my other one. So if you need, need to watch again, um, it is a little bit complicated the first time, but then once you understand what you're doing, you can fold these, you know, a hundred an hour if you wanted to. So the flat side is on the desk. I'm gonna take one of the triangles, push it inwards. Take the other triangle, push that one inwards. and then push my square down. I'm gonna to try to show you this different angle here. So at this point, if you have printing on one side, should it be outside or inside? Um, so if, you're, if you have decorative paper, 
like this one, you're gonna wanna have that be on the outside. So you can see that the folds here are actually on the inside. So in this case, you would be folding this one down, this one down, and then this one down. So decorative paper would go on the bottom of your table on the, on the flip side. I hope that helps Sandy. I'm gonna continue with my others. You're just kind of pushing those two triangle sides inwards and then pushing that top square back down. Kind of looks like, um, I don't know what it looks like, like a Pac-Man kind of thing. What about this angle? So triangle down, triangle down, and then, and then flat square down again. I hope this helps. Okay. I really have fun with paper. I don't know. It reminds me of those uh, cootie catchers or wish makers that Where you, you put your fingers in and you, yeah. Yeah. Kind of that same, um, this is a very typical base for origami. It is, yeah. And that uses one sheet of paper also. Right. I just think it's amazing what you can do with a, a flat piece of paper. Turning, turning a flat piece of paper into a three-dimensional object just brings me so much joy. I know I found the right career for myself if that's what makes me happy. So if for some reason, like you end up doing this and you realize that, oh crap, you know, it's not quite square or it hangs off a little bit of, a, of an edge, you can always take your scissors and just trim, you know, if maybe the fold didn't line up perfectly. Um, if you really wanted to have precision, precision with this, you can. I would say if you, if anyone saw the first book that I ever made by hand, they would laugh their faces off because it has glue all over it. It's crooked. The corners are off. I mean, it's, it's a shabby book, but... I did it. So your, your first book is never amazing, but it is created by you. So from here, what I would like to do is to glue all of these together. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at these as if they have uh, you know, the tops here, the points here, and you're gonna glue the flat side to the other flat side. So you're gonna take these two flat sides and glue them together. So I'll do one and I'll show you what that looks like. And from there, you're just gonna glue one on top of another, on top of another, on top of another. Um, if you wanna take a, like a scrap sheet of paper and slip it in, that way you won't get any glue underneath and your, your fold won't actually end up sticking together. That would be, that would be bad. This is where using a glue stick is probably a lot easier than using what I'm using. Um, but whatever you have on hand, you just want to make sure you're not getting a ton of glue on the other, on the underside, because you don't, wouldn't want this to, uh, stick in the bed in the wrong spot. So this has glue on it. This, uh, this square has glue on it. And I'm going to take my other square that does not have glue on it, making sure that the open part is in the same pointing in the same direction as the other open part. And I'm going to glue it down. And once it's glued, I'll show you what I mean by open to open side. So there you go. So both open sides together, you wanna to glue that square down. So I'm gonna do this side then. The next, I mean, you're just building off of whatever you did previously. So you're gonna put glue on this square And you're going to take another, another fold and you're going to place it. So the open side, two open sides together here, flat square to flat square. And I'm doing this fairly quickly. <laughs> so not going to be perfect. 
is okay. Life isn't about perfection all the time. Neck gets glued down. And you fold that one down again. And you can keep using your bone folder throughout all this. And do another one. This is, um, this is just a drawing copy paper that I had extras of, and it does not like this glue, I'll tell you what. Um, once paper meets glue, if you're not um, considering the paper grain, you can really have some funky results with wavy pages or pages that just don't close right. Um, and with origami books, because you're folding in both directions, you know, 50, 50% 50 of the time you're ignoring that paper grain, which in origami art really helps because you get that nice pop, you get that nice opening. Um, and that's actually the paper going against the grain is it doesn't want to stay closed, it wants to pop open. So in origami books, it's actually, that's, I mean, part of the reason why you kind of ignore, you ignore that fold or the grain, I'm sorry. So I have one more square to glue. Do my last one here. And ideally you wanna make sure that all these line, you know, the glue, when you glue the square down, it really lines up with the next one. Um, but again, it doesn't have to be perfect. I always say those little, those little um, quirks, let's say, I think they add character. You don't have to be perfect, it's handmade. You're not buying this off of Amazon. It's gonna have some, some qualities that you wouldn't find elsewhere. So there it is. I mean, that's the basic inner structure. And if I am, I am going to take a little bit of time just because I, it bothers me. I'm going to just trim up the, a little bit of the overhang on the square pieces. Not necessary, just because I'm a perfectionist. Okay. So you want to make sure as this sits on your on your table to dry, uh, you want to just pull it apart a little so that nothing sticks together where it shouldn't. Um, you know, just give it a little bit of fluffing. I guess fluffing is a proper term. Um, and then just set it aside while it sits and dries a little. Does anybody have any questions on the folding and the gluing? That was that was a lot that I went through. So. Um, Thank you for sharing the link, Amelia. It is gonna be up on YouTube in case you need to like rewind and pause, and zoom in real close. I do that, so. So moving on to the covers, um, you're gonna take your ribbon and uh, you can use you know, twine, you could use rope, you could use yarn. It really doesn't matter. It's just going to be the tie that uh, keeps the book closed. Um, you know, you can go, you know, gold, if you want to do like super Christmas style. Um, I just chose a color that matches my book here. Um, you want to make sure that you have at least, I, I usually say at least 12 inches. Um, I don't know about you, but for me, tying bows and tying knots, I always like to have a lot of extra to tie with. So this is about 20 inches of ribbon. Um, Again, just like paper, the more that you have, you can always cut it down later. So from here, we're gonna attach the ribbon to the inside of the cover. That way you don't see the seam of the ribbon. So you'll see it on one corner and you'll see it where it opens and closes. But you'll notice that underneath here, you really don't see it at all. So what that means is that it spans from the corner of one cover across the pages through the other corner of the cover and then out. 
So what we're going to do is you want to think about, you know, the orientation, which is going to be front, which is going to be back. So I want my create more to be my front cover and the flower to be the back cover. And what you're going to do is you're going to diagonal spin them. So they're like, you know, 45 degree squares. You're going to flip them over. And when I go to glue this, um, if I think about the thickness of the book that I just made, right? If I think about all the pages compacted together, what is the thickness of that? That amount of space is going to be the space between your two covers. This is basically your spine. It's an invisible spine to the book. Um, and it needs to be big enough or wide enough to, uh, to hold all of the pages that we just folded. Um, so if you do it too small, the book's not going to be able to be tied closed all the way. If you do it too big, it's going to be a little bit bulky so that when the star book opens up, you're going to see a little bit more of that gap in that ribbon. So again, it's a little bit of trial and error. There's really no wrong way of doing this. Um, it's going to turn out just fine if you do an eighth of an inch or whoops, you did a quarter of an inch. It's going to be okay. Um, so I'm going to put them at a diagonal here and I'm going to take my glue and I'm going to glue from one corner to the other corner, hop over to the other cover and do corner to corner on the other cover as well. And I'm not gonna place my ribbon down quite yet. I'm just putting some glue down in a diagonal line. Um, from there, I'm gonna put ribbon down on one cover and then make sure that my second cover is orientated well enough for that little that little tiny gap. So the gap right now is about um, it's about an eighth of an inch. So if you think about the, the thickness of the book that you just folded, you know it's it's not too thick here, right? It's not too much paper. So I'm going to put the ribbon down, making sure I have enough to tie on one side and tie on the other side. And then I'm going to grab my other cover here. I'm going to pick that ribbon up and again, make sure it's corner to corner with a small little gap in between. And most of the time with this glue, you can, you have a little bit of wiggle room. So if you find out that you didn't leave enough space, you can always go back and untie it or re-glue it. So I'll do a little bit of a close up here. Let's see, there it is. Not an eighth of an inch. That way when the book gets closed, there's enough uh, space to keep those pages intact. And I'm gonna add a little bit of uh, glue in the center there because I can already see just by holding it up there that it was, I was being too rough with it. Okay. So I'm going to set that aside. Just let that marinate for a little bit. Again, all the glues that we're hopefully using are pretty fast, fast drying. So you'll be good to go in a few more minutes. Um, so once the, you'll see that these books kind of sit flat on a table or they can open all the way around as a, like a sphere. Um, and so again, you want to make sure that none of those triangles or those glued pages are sticking together. That way, when you open it up, you have distinct points to your star. So once we take our, our, our and in book binding, we actually call it guts, our book guts. So we take our book guts and we find, oops, got all folded and funny here you find the first flat panel. So front or back, it really doesn't matter if it's, you know, I mean, they're, for me, they're blank pages. I haven't told the story yet. So front or back is, is nondescript. You're gonna put glue on this side. You're gonna glue it to the inner side of your cover, and then you're gonna flip it over and do the other side, folding that cover over, and so it glues on top of this one. Um, and so I'm gonna do that all in one foul swoop. Um, that way you can see what I'm doing. You, this is the part of book binding, no matter what book structure you're doing. When you're, it's called casing in the book. When you're casing in the book to the book covers, it requires no distractions. It requires clean hands. 
and a fresh glue brush because you don't want to be um, dilly dally. You don't want to take your time with it. You really want to make sure that the time that you put the glue on the paper, it goes right to the board. Um, so anytime you case in any book, in any book structure, book binding, um, this is the part of the process that is the most uh, nerve wracking because let's say you, so you made handmade paper and then you sewed 12 signatures together into a beautiful uh, text block and then you flubbed up the gluing to the cover. So, it, you know, it's that last step. You really want to make sure that you're super focused and, and just narrow-minded right into gluing because it is, it is a fast process. Um, book, book making all up until this point is a very slow process. And then the casing in is like, gotta get it done, gotta get it done. So I'm gonna do it all in one foul swoop. Um, and then if you have questions, we can, we can go back and answer. So again, glue on the flat side glue it down. When you glue it down, you want the open parts to be where the ribbon is. So I'm going to do that and then I'll do the other side. And again, you don't want to make, you want to make sure there's no glue seeping into the corners so that any of the pages or folds stick together. And I'm just using my fingers, um, which I don't really recommend use a sheet of paper, it's better. So again, with the, with the open side out pointing towards the ribbon, I'm gonna glue it down. And when I glue it down, I wanna make sure that I'm gluing it right to the edges, the outer edges. So the edges that have the, the ribbon here. You're gonna glue it down so that it, the cover here, let me get my bone holder, fast, fast, fast. So you have a little bit of a gap, let me show you. A little bit of a gap here, a little bit of a gap here, and then right up to the edge on this side. So that when it closes, oh dear. When it closes, you have a little bit of a, of a margin around the, around the outer sides. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and quickly glue the other side. And I'm gonna make sure that my ribbon is going the right way and then I'm gonna flip it over push it down, I can flip it over again and make sure it's lined up squarely. Being square is important. And then I'm gonna press it down. And then again, ideally I would put this in a book press or under a big cookbook or a dictionary or you know, piece of furniture that you have um, just to give it a little bit of weight and pressure. Um, I also like to go in with my bone folder and make sure that all the creases are nice and crisp. That'll add to that pop factor. Once it does open, it'll pop open faster and more excitedly. And this also make, this also reassures that you're not gluing any of these corners together. Nothing sticking together where it shouldn't be. But then Abracadabra, you've made a star book. There you go. So you could tie it in a bow, you could tie it in a knot, you could keep it on the on the table here. Um, this one I, I made purposefully, at least for the, the cover for a friend of mine. And I'm going to do, um, for Christmas, I'm going to write her five reasons why I think she's a good friend. There's five areas. So five little canvases, right? It's just four inches square. It doesn't have to be a masterpiece, but it's a nice surprise when you open it. Close, it just looks like a little square and it hangs. Um, but then when you open it, I mean, that's really the reveal, I think. That's really where the beauty, where the beauty lies. Um, and if it, if it is open like this, um, you won't see any of the writing, you know, I could do, um, you know, watercolor painting or, you know, collage, I could, you know, color this bright red if I wanted to. 
but the inside is where all the little messages go. So it is still hidden. You know, you're not seeing all that very nice personal writing, just looking at it hanging like this. You would actually have to look inside to read it. Um, I just think there is so much that you can do with a flash sheet of paper. Um, it's like, it's almost like magic what you can do because you don't think of it as um, a stack of paper anymore. I, I don't look at this and think this is a stack of paper. I look at this as an art object, um, as a gift, as something that I made from scratch that is now three-dimensional. Anybody have any questions? I do. I have a, the outer covers. <clears throat> yeah. Should they be? maybe a little bit bigger than two inches so that you do have that inner, you do have the inner sheets kind of tucked in from the cover. Um, that in, once you glue it down, you mean? Well, I cut them originally two inches, um, the same size as the, which is a quarter of the four inch size paper. So I don't have that much cardboard margin. I think I need to make them a little bit well, the, the, the margin should really only be on the outer edge. Yeah. So it's, I mean, it's not, it's like a 16th of an inch, an eighth of an inch. Yeah, an eighth of an inch. Okay, an eighth of an inch. Um, that way, you know, let me show you a different one I did. This one, you know, this one I glued down. Let me get this out of the way. This one I glued down right to the edge here. Mm -hmm and right to the edge on the other side so that when it does open, you don't see a whole lot of that green edging of the board. So that's really the amount of margin that you, that you would create if you wanted to have more or less of a margin is this tiny little area where the, the cover boards meet. Um, so you can see that here, I just, I see. I glued it right up to the edge. I see, okay. Cool. And the margin is on this side here. Yeah, okay, great. It's a lot of trial and error. I mean, they're so fun and easy to make. I think I could just do this all afternoon and find different tips and tricks to do. Um, I have this, I have this grand idea that I wanna make a huge one and hang it from my studio ceiling. Um, but the logistics of actually hanging it worry me. I am not concerned about making a big one. I'm concerned about what I'm going to do with it after I make it. I'm going to have to hire a man and a ladder or something. Um, but I just think they're so fun to make and they're, you know, they're very easy. They're fun. A child could do this. Um, the, the materials are fairly inexpensive and mostly what you probably already have in your home. Um, and again, it's just a really thoughtful gift. It's just something nice that you can make for a friend and they'll feel really love that you made them something and that you didn't just buy something as a candle or something. I don't know. Um, and I hope that this opened your eyes to a little bit more of bookmaking and got you excited to maybe look into other uh, book forms or bookbinding structures. There are really just tremendous amounts that you can learn out there. Um, I've been doing bookbinding for eight years full time and I will be the first to admit I only know a sliver of what there is to learn out there. Um, when I first got started, I was really into visual learning. So I did a lot of uh, tutorials online as well as um, some books that I wanted to just quickly share with you. So this book is tremendous. It gives amazing uh, detailed examples, you know, with measurements and, and uh, diagrams and things like that. So this is a really, it's a more complex because it's detail oriented, but I love details. So this is a really great book that I would recommend. Um, and then this one as well. This one is way more extensive um, and it has a ton of different of different binding structures. Um, it's very, very easy to understand. Um, and they also do provide you with some templates um, in the back as well. These are my two favorite books. There are so many more out there that you can learn from. Um, there are also a lot of YouTube tutorials that I could um, forward to you in an email. Um, but there are a lot of resources and I hope that you can add me as a resource, um, anything book related, paper related, if you have old books that need repairing. Um, I'm the book girl, you know, there's not many bookish people in Rochester. So um, if you ever have anything related to books or bookmaking or book repair, please keep me in mind and send me a note because I love to stay social about this kind of stuff. Um, it's, you know, keeping a relationship with Amelia has been great because we still do all sorts of bookish stuff and 
Um, I no longer really see her at RIT, but I see her out in the book world. So there are connections to be made. And I'm really grateful that you spent an hour with me doing a book craft. Thank you. Remind us where your studio is and uh, when and if it might be open and how we can visit you. Sure. Thank you. Um, I'm located in the Hungerford building. I moved last September, so I spent a good six months socializing, doing First Friday events. Um, it's a really fantastic building with a tremendous amount of talent floating around the halls. Um, I'm on the first floor through door one. I am open with all COVID safe policies. I just require an appointment so I can be prepared for you. Um, I also have an Etsy shop and I really hope that, you know, once post COVID times happen, that first Fridays can be a thing again and you guys can come visit me and see the Hungerford and just meet a ton of artists that are there. Um, there's a lot of good energy in Rochester and we're all trying our best virtually um, to keep it up. So I've been there. Yeah. Good place. Thank, Thank you for sharing my website and my Etsy as well. Um, I'm not a web person, but I, I get by with what I can. So I hope the websites work okay for you. Everybody's saying thank you. And I want to thank you too. Thanks uh, so much. Yeah.